Hey friends, it's Ruben with Hi-Fi MIDI. Uh, thanks for joining me for this random live stream. So um, if you're out there, just say hi. I know it's unannounced, but um, I'm at work right now. This is me outside of my um, normal YouTube hours. I'm actually working on uh, some music for a client. They have a podcast and they're, they asked me to create a custom track for them that's 90 seconds long. It's actually very specific, which I really like whenever they uh, they sent me some references. Like I want it to have this type of sound. Hey, Robbie or Roby. Huang, good morning. Good morning. So I'm using Cubase and I'm gonna switch my camera view really quickly. Using Cubase, um, which I'm not as familiar with Cubase as Logic, but I've been enjoying it a lot, especially the MIDI editing and functionality. By the way, I, a little disclaimer, I don't work really well whenever I feel like I know that people are watching me, but I decided to get over my fears and just do this. I thought maybe, hopefully it'll be helpful, uh, or maybe you could see my, um, my work process. I know there are better ways, um, you know, the goal is to always improve, always get faster. And uh, I want to really learn this program. So uh, what he asked me for is 90 seconds of music. And he gave me some tracks to listen to. And I'll open up some of them here. One of them is the saxophone line from Bob Seger, Turn the Page. Um, excuse me. He wanted, I feel like I'm having some audio issues. One, two, three. How does it sound out there? Is it distorting? One, two, three, one, two, three. Check, check, check. Oh, there you go. Will you ever make another Omnisphere video? Yes, <laughs> I will make another Omnisphere video. Um, in the meantime, um, I want to show you my process for this. So he wants a chill beat in the background. He wants a saxophone in it. Uh, he doesn't want it to sound very happy. So, okay, good. It's clear. The first thing I usually start with, I set my tempo. So something about walking pace, not very fast, but not very slow either. It doesn't have to be a dirge. It, it, he doesn't want it to sound happy. So I'm, I need to create something kind of serious. So uh, I usually start with the keyboard. Whoa, that was weird. So I chose Keyscape and I'm using a Rhodes sound. So I'm gonna start with my, my first section. And I have a little time display right here to I want to keep it around 90 seconds, maybe give him a little bit more so that he could work with. So here we go. I'm going to make a lot of mistakes here. All right, that was a little section in there I didn't really like the chord changes. I 
I like that right there, but it was what came after. Now I'm creating a theme for for his podcast. Um, so I don't want the chord changes to be too distracting. Um, so this is where it gets a little tricky being creative, coming up with something new. There, these three chords are here. I don't like them. So I'm going to quantize this really quick. It's going to be a beat. So uh, it doesn't have, to, I don't want it to sound very organic. Uh, maybe just a little bit. So I'm going to set quantize to eight. I do like it being humanized. So I'm, I'm increasing the number of ticks here. What, what the ticks do is that they offset the notes just a little bit so that it humanizes the uh, the plane. So it's going to be aligned to the grid, set to eighth notes, but just a little bit off enough so that it's not too perfect. And that did it, so. I'll fix those chords later because uh, um, I don't know what to come up with right there. All right, now I'm going to add a beat. I like playing beats on the keyboard. I've never used a, a, a drum pad before. So I'm using battery and I was auditioning through different kits earlier and I was just thinking of one that sounded like a, like a chill hip hop sound. You know, the kind that, uh, that they play on YouTube when you're studying. I think it's ca called lo-fi hip hop. So I was looking for something that had that sound that is there, but it's not distracting. So here I have my, my kick and my snare. That's the most important thing. You don't have to play those things at the same time. You can start off with the, with the kick and the snare. I'm gonna try it in just one shot because I'm trying to get this done as quickly as possible. My timing was really off, I think. That's okay. So this one, the beats were a little bit closer together. So I'm going to go to quantize 16th notes. And this one, instead of doing ticks, I'm going to give it a little bit of a swing. Um, I don't know how much, but I'm going to start off with something conservative, conservative like 25, 26%. Then I'm going to quantize. Because I, I want it to have some sort of a little shuffle to it. I, 
I've never used OzKit. Is that within battery or is that the, the is that its own um plugin? There are so many kits out there. But I I'm pretty happy with battery. I don't use it all the time, but when I do get to use it, it has all the sounds I need. Um all right, so I'm not going to use um semi hollow. I think I'm going to use electric sunburst. So I was playing around with the muted sound. This chord progression is pretty easy. It starts off with an E minor to a G major to a C major and then a C2 to E minor, G major, and then to A minor. So whatever I'm going to play on this guitar, I'm going to kind of uh, do a syncopated rhythm that follows that chord progression. And I don't have to do anything really complicated um, because that chord progression has a lot of common tones on it. Especially that E right there and the G. very forgiving and if I mess up I'll just edit the MIDI oops I already messed up So I'm just trying to figure out what I like here. And I think so far going up to the octave. Uh, that's kind of tricky right there. record that So right there, I'm just gonna copy and paste this to the next part. I may delete some notes later on. And this I definitely wanna quantize because uh, bum, 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 so that's 16th notes. I'm gonna leave the, uh, the swing. Let's see where it goes back into that. That's measure 18. I'm going to copy and paste. Oh, that's kind of off. How did that happen? Give me a second while I figure out how this happened. So I copied it. Oh, I see what I did. It's over here. The MIDI region started earlier. Okay. Oops. Okay. Um, I'm not gonna do mixing until later on, but I wanna add a bass in here. 
I'm not sure whether to do whether, whether to use electric bass or like a synth bass, but uh, maybe I want something synthy because I could have that glide sound on it. So I'll use Spectrosonics. I always forget the name of the company. And they're so popular too. Trillion bass. I don't want to overdo it. Um, <laughs> kind of putting myself out there just making this up on the spot. Synth bass. This is uh, the time time consuming part is trying to find the right sound. Um, I want something. I don't know how to describe the sound that I want. Um, I don't even know what kind of sound I want. I'll just start listening to these. Maybe listen to the analogs, analog sounds. Whoa, that's loud. No, that's too buzzy. That's too subby, something in between. These are some really cool sounds, by the way. Moist bass. So I guess I'm going for something that doesn't stand out, but you can feel it there. And you can also hear the fundamental note. So I'll listen to this and if I don't like it, then I'll change something else. I'm going to open up a fretless bass sound because that might sound good on this. Um, Ample Bass JF, that's a uh, Yako or Jacko Pistorius space. <laughs> the sound I'm looking for. I need to find it soon. I think these are too big. Let me check the other bases on here. Maybe electric. So electric fretless. Mm. 
maybe fretless is not the answer. I mean, in cases like this, I usually go to my trusted old um, J bass. Just gonna take some of the de detail off of here. I do want it to sound warm, but not detailed. Okay, let's hear that. In any case, I need a bass line, so if I need to replace it later, I'll, I'll do it. lot of mistakes in that but instead of replaying it i'm just going to fix the midi Hopefully you can see this. So that rhythm right there is kind of funky in a bad way. So I want this bass part to coincide with the with the kick. Right there. So this is gonna go right here, and I'm gonna raise the velocity. I wanted to cut off on the snare hit. You 
play the instrument like it's live going for 16 bars. I like making these little corrections because they start cleaning it up and I can hear in real time as the music gets, um, gets better and better. All right, so I'll fix that ending later. Um, in the meantime, I'm gonna start, this is when I start EQing it just a little bit. Like this, this Rhodes is really thick, so I'm gonna take off some of that bass. Um, you're gonna hear that it's gonna open it up a lot. It's gonna sound a lot cleaner because some of the low frequencies in, in the, the Rhodes compete with the frequencies in the bass, and then it starts sounding really thick and muddy in the middle. So um, by going to the equalizer over here, um, I'm going to roll it off, usually about 100 hertz, but you have to use your ear for this. And you'll hear that it starts cleaning it up a lot. take off I'm going to take off some of the detail from the J bass like I don't need those little squeaks in there um they're, they're nice to have but in this case I don't I think they're going to show up and you're not going to know what they are it's too detailed so I'm going to take them off so up here in the high frequency band just a little bit to the right all right let's listen and i'll do the same for the guitar take out taking out those lower frequencies All right, and then we're gonna fill it in with a pad. So the, it's always hard for me to find the right pad, um, which is why I saved a lot of them. Actually, the reason why I'm doing the Omnisphere, uh, the no talking, just playing, is because I'm, I'm trying to find sounds that I'm gonna use in the future. And that's a, that's a way for me to kill two birds with one stone. I'm making a video and I'm finding sounds that I like. So I think I've already done the pad sounds before. So let's listen to them. And I'm sorting them by rating because I've rated them. Nope, no strings. So I'm looking for something that can change. I don't want something uh, that can change quickly. I don't want something that has a very long tail to it. I don't want it to be too atmospheric. This one kind of tails off. I do like the tone of it.
That's kind of cool. But it's too long. I know I can... I can change that over here in the effects. There has to be a reverb. Oh, there it is. I don't need that delay. Um, how do I disable this? Let's hear this one. It's not the sound I was looking for, but I, I do like the sound. I think it's, it's going to stand out a little bit. So one thing I do whenever I'm filling, filling in the sound, I don't like doubling the melody. So if you could hear da 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 that's the melody and that stands out to me. So I don't want the pad or other instruments to double that cuz So I kind of want it just to fill in. So I choose, I choose chord inversions that are going to obscure the melody or, or at least not stand out. If that makes sense. So let's try that. Okay, that's sounding okay. Um, let's use that for now. Okay, now on this part, in my mind, it's opening up. Uh, let me quantize. Actually, I don't know if I should quantize the uh, pads. Now, if you're doing this, be careful and don't just automatically quantize. You have to know how your instrument responds, how quickly it responds to your plane, or where the um, where the highest point of the attack is, because some of these pads they ease in. So if you try quantizing them then you're going to get that the full attack of the sound later than the beat, later than when you first pressed it, and it's going to sound off. So as you can see, this pad, the way I played it, it ended up kind of before the beat. And that's because my ear is, um, is causing me to compensate for its slower attack, so I'm playing it just a little bit ahead of, uh, ahead of time. So I might leave it like that. Okay, um, I'm gonna copy and paste this. Oh no, that's a bad idea, because... Oh yeah, um, I'll just stretch this out like this, and then copy and paste it to the second part, the... when it comes back in. All right, so I want another pad for this middle section, but this time I want it to be a little bit more prominent. Maybe that Juno pad. No, 
See the tail on that, it's too long. I don't know if it's the reverb or what. Maybe it could be the, um, the release. So here in the envelope, um, the release determines how long your note continues to play after you're finished. So as you can hear, I've, I've cut it all the way down and it cuts it off. I don't want it to sound like that, but I do want it to cut off. Let's try it like that. I'm going to have to EQ this later on. I'll go a little bit before. Um, I like that. I think it needs to be a little bit louder. Do you sell music on stocks? I don't. Um, this is not, um, I don't do this that often. I, I love doing this, but uh, no. If you want me to do this for you, um, just email me at hi-fi-midi at gmail.com. Um, I love doing this type of work. It's It's very fun. So, I see you played with the velocity. Is it for realism? It depends on uh, on what instrument I'm using. For the bass, I played with the velocity because there were certain notes that you couldn't hear. They were too quiet because I play them too softly. Um, other times, let's see, what other instrument did I change velocity on? I think it was just that because I couldn't hear the note. But yeah, I would say it's for realism, but mostly for actually hearing the pitch. All right, let's record that part. that's that's all right um i'll leave that mm, so now i feel like it needs a transition between this um i probably will use omnisphere again some type of musical effect Let's see. I need something with motion. So I'm going to look at the spells and vibes, electro, electro mayhem, ethnic, hits and bits, noise scapes, probably noise scapes, um, transition effects. Okay, let's try that. E. I should probably look at the categories. Mm -hmm. 
No. So this is when I'll probably do a video of soon is transitions so that I could pick ones that I like. Hi, Mr. Daniel. Thank you for joining. Thank you for your compliment. This is why it's important to to rate or go through your sounds and rate them because you never know when you'll be using them. Now textures. Um, shoot. Let's go through the featured sounds. I'm I'm looking for something uh, sort of bell like that is uh, ascending, maybe playing a glissando or some type of arpeggio that's ascending. So I have this sound idea in my head, but it I don't want it to be over the top. I guess since I just described the sound to you, I should go to that category: bells and vibes. Um, let's see, I, I've listened to these already, so. If you're joining me, hello. So I think all of these are just playable. Um, I'm looking for something that moves automatically. I think that's going to be under ARP plus BPM. So BPM bells. You know, I, I'm guessing I'm not going to find the sound I'm looking for under arpeggio. Um, textures, playable. Let's see. Well, thank you very much. So I'm looking for something like that. Not exactly that sound, but something that, that rises up like this. So let me try that. I'll replace it later um, after this video is done if, I, if I'm not satisfied with it. So I'm gonna make that very quiet. All right. Yeah, that's what I wanted right there. So I, what I did was a uh, glissando upward. So I'm playing A minor. A minor, A minor. And I'm playing it in triplets. 
I'll show you what that looks like in the MIDI. Yeah, that's exactly what I wanted right there. All right, so let's look at what this looks like. These are all triplets, um, probably 16th note triplets. So I definitely want to quantize that. I'm going to try to zoom in as much as possible. Now go over here, over here. There you go. So I'm going to highlight these. Um, ba -da -ba -da. Maybe that's one, two, one, and hmm. I'm trying to determine what type of triplet it is. It's not 30 second note triplets, is it? Hmm. No. It's a very cool sound, by the way. Two. Maybe it's not triplets. Let me try. 30 second notes. That seems a little bit closer right there. This is where it starts getting a little messy. If you're not careful. By the way, if this doesn't work, I'm just gonna go back to the way it was. I think it sounded fine. I just like things to be clean sometimes. No, that, that doesn't fit. It was okay like that. So what do you call that shimmering sound style? Okay, that, so the sound name is Adagio Ferissimo. And that's under the textures, the playable textures. But as far as that technique where I'm playing, um, I'm playing a chord as an arpeggio going up, that's called a glissando. Uh, sort of like, think of a harp player. You've heard the harp, I think most of you have probably heard of harp player play like this little run um, where they play the same notes, but over and over and Ascending or descending, that's called the glissando. So all of these are virtual instruments. Um, somebody asked if that guitar is real. It's, I'm using, um, Native Instruments Session Guitarist Electric Sunburst Deluxe, and I'm using the muted, the muted sound. All right. So I think I, I don't really want to add any more instruments to this. I think he wanted something simple. Um, the last thing, which is going to be the hardest part, is adding a saxophone. Uh, so one of the inspirations he took was from Bob Seger's Turn the Page. And I'm going to play the beginning of it for you so you can hear it. Whoa. Uh, let me see. Well, that didn't work. You know what? It's probably going to get demonetized if I play that, but. So I'm using Swam alto saxophone right now. I want 
want something bright and very cheesy sounding with a lot of a uh, lot of 80s reverb sound. <laughs> So on what do you base yourself to create the track? What are the feelings, messages, intentions behind the creation of a track that guides you through, through the creative process? Um, I'm really going based off of what he described. He, uh, The guy that hired me, who's a friend of mine, is creating a podcast. And he said he wanted a saxophone at the beginning. And he gave me a, tr a track. He said, if I could rip that saxophone part out, um, that would be great, but I'm not going to do that. I personally don't want to copy out someone else's music. Um, at least intentionally, I don't want to do that. And he want, he wanted something that had a very chill hip hop sound to it. Uh, so there, that's why I, I used this beat. He didn't want something that sounded happy. I think the topics uh, that he's covering are pretty serious. So I, I think he was going for something modern, but that sounded serious and had that saxophone sound at the beginning. So I'm basing my music on that. Um, as far as what I and it's sort of this pensive mood. Um, so, so I want to convey a deep thought, um, but nothing over the top, if that makes sense. Swam saxophone. <laughs> This is going to be the very hard part because this is not stuck to the beat at the beginning. In fact, he asked me to, if I could put the saxophone at the beginning before the music, um, that would be great. That would be the best option. So th this part is usually the part that takes the most tweaking and editing. It's, it's not too realistic, I think. Um, it depends on, on the programming because I'm just playing it like this. I'm going to take off the reverb from this and put a reverb on it, on the track. So I'm just going to, I don't have any plans for this. I'm just going to try to play what inspires me. I think the, I think it sounds, feels better. It kind of reminds me of the scenes when I was a kid, movie scenes where um, my grandma would cover my eyes. I don't know why she would do that, but <laughs> anyway, you guys know what I'm talking about. All right. So I'm going to play this and just kind of play what inspires me. So as you can hear, like there, there's a lot of mistakes because um, 
I, I'm just making it up on the fly. But this is where I do a lot of editing afterward. I fix notes or I, I actually manually put in the notes um, in my MIDI editor. I think it sounds sounds good, though, uh, with this style of music. So hopefully he's going to be happy with it. So I'm going to actually record it. And whatever happens, happens. You know, that's the beauty of MIDI editing. So I was not happy with that take and usually I sometimes I do it over and over or I'll do it section by section it it all depends on the on the context or on the um on how I'm feeling or the the nature of the music like there there's a lot of different factors that play in on on my workflow um so I'm going to try this one more time Maybe I'll start with this little mi middle section. So I'll start with that. Oops, ah, wrong note. <laughs> Forget the chord progression. This is why. So I need to write it down. Okay, I like that. Um, now, let's go to the beginning. I'll keep this and I'll work on this, polish it up. The cool thing is that you can add growl on this. I love, I love adding growl. Some of the note transitions need to be cleaned up a little bit. Yeah, this so th this reverb plugin is from Cubase. It's called uh, where is it? Revelation, and I just have it set to 
Hall, th uh, this is the first one that popped up, and I'm I'm using it. I like the way it sounds. <laughs> kind of long that that tail let's see um I I usually add it in post, uh, or I, I add it as a, an auxiliary track. Um, it depends on the effect that I'm going for, but usually I'll add it to uh, an auxiliary track and then send my, uh, my instruments there. That way it all sounds like it's in the same room. For this though, um, I want most of the instruments to sound like they're pretty dry. Except for like the synth bell sounds, I want that to have a very ambient sound. All right, so let's record that first part. I'm gonna try to wrap this up. again. I can work with that. And then let's do the last part. Actually, you know what? I'll play it from here. So I'm not, I don't know what I'm going to do with this, but I'll, I'll take the parts that I like and then I'll polish them. The parts that don't really resonate with me, I'll fix those. So let's go into it. I want to see how long I've been actually streaming. Um, so it's been an hour. Wow. Not bad. Not bad. If I can get this done in, in an hour, that would be awesome. So, uh, I think I like that theme. Ba -da -dum, ba -da -da -dum. that was my wife asking me if I want to have lunch and the answer is yes I do want to have lunch um, so I'm gonna probably be wrapping this up sooner than I thought
Man, this is a lot more fun than I thought it was gonna be. Um, I don't, I don't feel that bad playing this in front of you. Okay, so I'm gonna raise the octave on this. Oh, what do I do? Um, yeah, I'm a full-time musician. I perform, I do studio work, I do uh, some small film, film scoring, composing, I teach piano, I, I, I do it all, honestly. Um, but I've been getting a lot of work lately doing things like this, like corporate music, um, and just finishing tracks for people. Ba -da -da -da. I want it to go up right there. Ba -ba -da. Well, I played in a band called La Marcha. La Marcha, it's a Latin band. We played salsa, cumbia, merengue, all the, all that Latin dance music. Very fun. So I want that to end on this beat, just to give it some energy. That sounds like it's a little late. So let's go back. I'll raise the octave on this. Yeah, you can search it on YouTube, La Marcha Sound. So I want certain things to be consistent. Like at the beginning, I cut that note off. So I'm gonna cut this, the note off on this part since it repeats that same melody. I'm trying to think of uh, the timing on this part. Well, you know what? Um, actually, I forgot. <laughs> I forgot that my wife called me to have lunch. So I'm going to end this here. Um, I will show you the finished product later on because this is going to take a lot of editing and this video is going to take about two hours to finish. But um, I'm going to do more of these projects because I have some more, th more things going on. And uh, if you enjoyed this, please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, um, hit that notification bell so that you could know when I'm going to have a live stream or a random live stream. And leave a comment below, tell me what you thought of this. Thank you very much. I'll see you next time.